very best guy. Boom! And the greatest drive. My. They're the best. I love them. Even though Katie owes me five bucks. What? I know you guys are excited to get on the tour, but first, a few safety rules. That's right, we do have a few safety rules to go over. All the vehicles in motion, please try to remain seated at all times. Also, make sure to keep those arms and legs inside the vehicle. You may notice that we've got this red emergency cord that runs throughout the center of the trail. So if you do have a medical emergency, get dropped something over the side, or maybe there's an issue with the audio or visual part of the media, no worries. All you have to do is just reach up, pull that cord, and I'll be back to assist you as soon as it's safe to do so. Uh, if you plan on taking pictures or videos today, that's totally fine. Just make sure to keep those cameras nice and protected. We do have some water effects here today on the tour. Uh, if you've got a selfie stick, just keep it inside the tram at all times. Last but not least, no smoking or vaping while we're out in the studio. And that's pretty much it for safety. So right now, it looks like we are just about ready to say goodbye to the theme park and hello to the studio. We've got over 400 acres to explore out here today. Uh, for those of you who've been on the tour in the past, you may notice that maybe the route looks a little different today. Maybe some of the productions I'm going to mention to you are different. Maybe myself, Katie the tour guide, maybe I'm different from the last tour guide you had. It definitely makes the studio tour so interesting. Let's hopefully it is, you know, a little different every time you come on back. Now, something you may notice here today on the tour, again, uh, it's a different route out there. We had the show Quantum Leap doing some active production over the last couple of days here. So, again, if you've been on the tour in the past, yeah different today so we'll find out when we get down there um, right now we're making our way down our movie poster timeline area so if you're taking a look off to the right hand side you're getting a nice selection of some of the thousands of movies we've created here at Universal Studios over the years speaking of years we've been here for over 100 years March 15th 1915 that's when we first opened the doors here to Universal Studios Hollywood and then off to the left hand side live construction happening on that hillside there that is for the new fast and furious roller coaster that is currently in development other fun fast and furious news fast x is currently available to stream on peacock now back over on the right hand side you all are about to see our very own fire station we have here on our lot fire station 51 it's actually a nice throwback to the television series emergency exclamation point or if you watch chicago fire they also have a fire station 51 so again Real fire station with hard working firefighters there. And we have our very own fire department here on our lot because we are our own city. We are a universal city. That means we're an entire city dedicated to filmmaking. Uh, but something that our city has that not a lot of other cities have sound stages. In fact, the very first sound stage that will be coming up here shortly on the left hand side. You'll get a chance to see our sound stage 12. And normally I'd say it's currently home to the hit show, The Voice. But The Voice has actually moved a little further into our back lot area. However, if you're a big fan of The Voice, it still says The Voice on the side. So feel free if you want to snap quick picture as we drive on by here this evening. You are more than welcome to do so. Uh, the most recent season of The Voice, that'd be season 24. We wrapped things up just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the big news for that season, Reba officially joined as one of the coaches. And then the big news from the season prior to that, Blake Shelton, he has officially retired as one of the coaches. But you know, it's Hollywood, so never say never. You can always come back as like a guest coach at some point. We'll see what happens. But definitely some big changes for season 24. And they're already starting to talk about some big changes for season 25 as well. So we will all just have to stay tuned for those updates. And again, that sound stage is coming up here on the left hand side. Now you're about to see a couple more sound stages. They've been used for shows like Hacks, Quantum Leap, and even the show. You just got me a water when you get So what is you put egg on on the cheese? You put cheese on the eggs on the cheese. It's right. Whoa, how many seats do you think are in there? No, it's gotta be a lot. Yeah. We could probably fit the whole Bel Air casting crew in there. You know, we gotta get one of these for the mansion. <laughs> for sure. Yo, lucky for y'all, the Banks family mansion lives right here on the Universal Rock. Right. Some of Bel Air's most pivotal scenes have been filmed right here. Jabari, what have been your most say. memorable moments? I don't know, I mean, there's so many to choose from. You know, I love the four-year set when Will first enters and at that moment his life changes forever. What about you? Well, ooh, the Bel Air Academy gym set is here too, and I remember you having me sit in that cold ice bath for hours. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was really fun. <laughs> I still can't feel my toes. <laughs> no, but seriously, my favorite part of this lot is the talented crew who put it all together from hair, wardrobe, makeup, set design, props, and transportation. Transmo, yes! Yo, Transmo is the best. And they have the sweetest last for us to play with. Actually, okay. speaking of, if we're going to get a ride like this, we better go talk to Transmo now and let these people get back to our tour. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. As long as I get to drive. Oh, not if I've got the keys. Oh, not for <laughs> Come on, man.
a wall. Uh, but this wall actually doubles as a really great sound barrier because just up the hill to the right is our theme park. So, you know, maybe we're filming like a really romantic scene out on our metro sets and then all of a sudden we get that Simpsons theme music from the theme park rolling down the hill. It's going to mess with the mood of our production. So we strategically place this wall here to block out that noise. And then it works both ways. Maybe we're filming like a really epic car chase scene out on our metro sets with lots of explosions uh, like we did for the film Hobbs and Shaw. We don't want to worry everyone who's enjoying themselves in the theme park with all those loud noises, so this wall will also very strategically keep those sounds in. Now today we're going to get a chance to take a closer look at that wall. We actually call it a trunkloid. It means fools the eye. But as we get closer here tonight, you'll notice it's not fooling our eyes, right? We can we can tell it's a painted wall, which is what it is. Uh, but we're talking about fooling the camera's eye, making the camera believe that this is a 3D structure. In fact, I can show you a quick example here on your screen. This is from Bruce Almighty, starring Jim Carrey. Filmed on our Brownstone Street area, but then those buildings in the background, that is the same backdrop we're passing by. They've just painted it a little differently for this production, but it's the same idea. Oh, you're done now. Great. B E A Beautiful. And we're currently traveling through our London Square location. Uh, this area was heavily featured in The Amazing Spider-Man. However, it looked very different out here for that movie. They actually draped green screens over the side of our painted wall, over the sides of our facades. That way they could change up the cityscape however they wanted to. So Andrew Garfield and his stunt double, or Spider-Man, uh, they were real. They were actually out here on harnesses jumping from rooftop to rooftop. It was just the background that was all CGI or computer-generated imagery. Off to the right-hand side, we're currently stopped by this lovely brick wall, but there's actually no brick out there at all. It's all foam rubber and fiberglass. It's a lot easier to put up, a lot easier to tear down. It's a bit more cost-efficient for the studio as well. And just beyond that brick wall out there, or faux brick, I should say, uh, but beyond that wall is our New York Street area. You may have kind of seen little tidbits of it as we were passing by the little intersections here in our London Square area. Uh, but our New York Street, we've had productions like NCIS, Criminal Minds, more of the amazing Spider-Man, and even the show America. American Ninja Warrior do a lot of active production out there, so lots of uses over the years. And again, we call the area we're in right now London Square. We call the street next to us New York Street. Doesn't have to be London, doesn't have to be New York. For example, uh, for Transformers, they actually transformed our New York Street into downtown LA, or maybe you saw the Blues Brothers, that area was Chicago. When the Pinto fell, and you saw it land and make this big hole in the street, that was on the back lot. We dropped it from a crane. You dig like that in Chicago, you... you, you know. Not a good idea. When people ask me, of all of the movies I've ever done, what was the most satisfying, the most fun, I've got to say Blues Brothers. We've got to sing, we've got to dance, got to drive and train with the best stunt people in the world, and, and got to be an actor and a writer. So it was a good piece of work. Danny called John America's guest because just didn't walk into anybody's house. During the shooting of the movie, John was missing, we couldn't find him. Danny went off looking for him and saw a light on in this one house and knocked on the door. I said, uh, sir, we're doing a movie down here. We're looking for one of our actors. Oh, John, yeah, he's on my couch. He came in, he had a snack a couple hours ago. He's sleeping. He was America's guest. I mean, literally that happened. All right, so it's like right now we're going to leave this concrete jungle behind, and instead we're going to take you all to the digital jungle as we head on over to Skull Island with director Peter Jackson. It's the original King Kong that, that made me want to direct movies. I saw that movie on TV when I was about eight or nine years old, and I wanted to become a filmmaker. I like films that just take you away from your real life and sweep you up in the future. Kong literally does that. I mean, you're on board the ship, you're sailing to a lost island, you're encountering monsters and creatures from, you know, prehistoric times. I was thrilled when University invited me back to Skull Island. It's great to have you along for the ride. Now, we have created this 3D immersive experience, so you're going to have to have your glasses ready. Don't put them on yet, but just have them in your hand because we're about to return to Skull Island. We really put a lot of thought into the character and personality of the and he's so much more than a monster. In fact, he's not a monster, even though he is an incredibly majestic, ancient creature. He's a force of nature. He's old, he's wise, he's proud, he's fierce, and obviously he has a heart. The most important feature with Kong are his eyes. Kong's eyes are wonderfully expressive, they're full of emotion. 
his eyes are like a window into his personality and his life. He's head down an enormous number of encounters with his foes, the T Rexes and the various dinosaurs on Skull Island, so he's been beaten up, scarred, you know, chewed up, spat out by these dinosaurs at various times, and he, he wears the scars of a lot of ancient battles. The Universal Tram is winding its way through a very rough, narrow trail in Skull Island, allowing the visitors a little sneak peek at some of the wildlife at Skull Island. In a sense, this is like a mini sequel, um, a mini continuation. We are just taking the, the Tong and the Skull Island and the dinosaurs that we established in our future first.
we're really creating about 50 minutes of a feature film. That amount of visual information, that number of pixels, and presenting them to the audience is a hell of a line. That's right, it was quite a ride, and in just a few we're going to show you all a different sort of ride. We're going to show you some of our picture cars. So picture car, that's going to be any vehicle that's seen by the camera, whether it's in a movie, TV show, commercial, or music video. Starting us off here this evening, coming up on the left-hand side, we've got that new scoop from American Graffiti, as well as that Magnum PI Ferrari. Uh, we even have a couple of our vehicles from our Back to the Future Part 1 and Part 2 flicks. Recently moved a vehicle out here from Public Enemies. For my Flintstones fans, a couple prehistoric options on the sleigh for you today. Really, they're converted golf carts. For my Harry Potter fans, we've got that blue vehicle out here. For my Fast and Furious fans, I know we just have one car on the sleigh right now, but I have a feeling we'll see at least one more vehicle from that franchise a little later on here in the tour. For my Jurassic fans, a couple options on the sleigh for you today. For my Jordan Peele fans, also a couple options for you. From his films Nope and Us. And then the last couple of picture cars you see in there, they're all from Transformers, including the one in the center there that kind of looks like a tank. In fact, everything on the outside is actually made out of a lightweight wood material. A lot easier to move around on set, a lot easier to blow up, if need be. Oh, guys, looks like right now, looks like we're going to go ahead and switch gears here. In fact, I am going to let this guy introduce our next location. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Perfect. Thank you, John Hammond. That's right. In just a moment, we're going to be taking everyone back in time as we take a look at some of the picture cars, props, and set dressing pieces that were used in the first three Jurassic Park productions. This past June, we actually celebrated the 30th anniversary when the original Jurassic Park movie first hit theaters, so pretty huge milestone for that production. And then for those of you who saw Lost World Jurassic Park, you may recognize Mobile Lab Unit that's coming up here on the left-hand side. In fact, I'll show you the same scene on your screens where it's featured. Um, this mobile lab unit, just like that tank for Transformers, it is also used... Uh-oh. Um... Hey, Mike, where, are you sure you are giving permission to drive through this area right now? Okay, Mike says, yeah, okay, uh, Mike, we're going to take your word for it, and folks, totally safe, very safe, um, you know, I'm sure the dinosaur that's inside that mobile lab unit, they couldn't possibly get out, so, oh, 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 it looks like one of those dinosaurs out in their cages, oh my goodness, oh, I have no idea how it's going to happen. <laughs> It's just dinosaur acid. It's going to wipe right off with your skin, so no <laughs> But one of the important things we have to deal with here on the Universal Backlot, as well as in all of our Jurassic films, that would be weather. Because typically here in sunny Southern California, typically we get sun almost every single day. But here on the Universal Backlot, it's a whole other story. Now, say we have a script that calls for snow. All of that snow is going to be delivered to us by a company called Snow Business. Because there's no business like snow business that really is their name and their slogan if we have a script that calls for rain for thunder for lightning we have to create those weather effects here on our lot so coming up next we're actually going to go ahead and give you all a live weather demonstration here this evening uh we're going to make our way down the hill here into our old mexico area you may recognize this upcoming location from productions like nacho libre three amigos a Lady Gaga music video, it was her Chuda, Chuda music video. Criminal Minds, you know, Borders filmed out here. They actually filmed two different episodes in the same location. They call it two different areas in each episode. Indiana Jones, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull filmed a few scenes out here. Shameless filmed part of an episode out here. Uh, even the movie Hop, they uh, actually transformed this area into China for a quick tea. Oh, all right, sounds like it's adding some of the thunder. Looks like some lightning effects as well. Right? Uh, those thunder effects, those are all strategically placed uh, speakers along the set. Uh, normally that would be added in post-production, but for presentational purposes, we have them along the set. Strobe lights are creating that lightning effect for us. Oh, okay, and it looks like it activated the rain. Great. Uh, the rain effects, those are sprinklers, shooting the water straight up into the air, allowing the water to fall down naturally to the earth, just like rain would. You know, normally at this point in the tour, this is where they turn off the rain effects. Weird. Oh, well, looks like we don't have anybody up in the weather booth right now either. Um. Okay, uh, you know what, folks? No worries. You know, I'm sure we'll have someone out here in just a few moments, so that way we can continue. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Okay, let's take all that rain. We just got ourselves a black one. Make sure to keep those cameras nice and protected. But I'm very happy to know that all that flash flood water you see there, it's 
recycled water. We just cycle it right back up to the very tip top of that hill. And we just saw flash flood up close and personal. We have also recognized that location if you saw this movie, Big Fat Liar. Flood. We're going to take it nice and easy now. We're going to hop that border, busy right on down our Six Points location. You're out here in Six Points. For those of you who saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, you've seen this area in a bunch of scenes from that movie. Uh, specifically, the scenes with Leonardo DiCaprio and the little, the little girl took place out here. Uh, or maybe you're watching the show Killing It with Craig Robinson. They filmed a whole bunch of scenes out here for season one and season two. Since we're right around Six Points, that means at this point in the tour, we're about halfway through, so here's that first friendly reminder for you. We still have that red decoy that's located directly in the center of the tram. So if you do have a medical emergency, you drop something over the side, maybe it's an extreme bathroom emergency, you do have that as an option, otherwise you just remain seated. Continue on here at the tour. You're seeing some uh, some of those ghosts from the western past there. Really, uh, the folks who did that shadow work there, uh, those are some of the stunt performers in the Waterworld show. So, kind of cool. Oh, wow. uh, now, as we continue on here, something you'll notice this evening as we're passing through this area, a lot of door frames out there. They're all different sizes. That is done on purpose because a few of our western cowboys were a little on the shorter side. So what we would do is we would stand those shorter cowboys up in front of one of the smaller door frames. That way they would appear bigger, brawnier, stronger. And then maybe that female co-star, maybe she was a little taller, so maybe they cast someone like me. I'm almost six foot, not quite, almost there. But they usually stand me up in front of one of those taller door frames, that way I appear a little more petite, yeah, more vulnerable, in need of saving, if you will. And it makes sense a lot of our cowboys would be on the shorter side because back in the day we were really looking for folks who knew how to ride horses, so we would end up recruiting horse jockeys. Typically those gentlemen are going to be small in stature, so definitely makes sense. Now we've turned the corner here and we're passing right on by another portion of Six Points. And that's because Six Points is actually made out of six different streets. They're each equipped with their own bank, saloon, and sheriff's department. So back in the day, we could film up to six different movies out here at one time. And that's because most of our Western films were silent films. So then our founder, Carl Lemley, used to set up these bandstands. And for 25 cents, you could come and cheer on your favorite cowboy. So you could cheer for the good guys, boo and hiss for the bad guys. Most of our Western stars loved that because the majority of them were theatrically trained actors. So they were used to having a live audience, loved having that live studio audience feel. Now as we uh, continue on here, maybe at this point in the tour, maybe some of us are still feeling a little bit of trauma from that whole flash flood scenario. So we're going to make it up to you all right now. We are about to take everyone on a nice little vacay. We're going to head right on over to Amity Island. It's a small New England town, but don't worry. We have caught that great white man-eating shark jaws. He's hanging out, literally, over on the right-hand side of the tram. In fact, uh, my friend George, he's a police diver. He's out in the water right now. He's just checking to make sure everything's all clear for us. Just in case we decide we want to hop out, you know, we go for a nice little... Uh oh, looks like there's something on the water there, but George, although, looks like maybe it's not moving. Oh no, it's under the water. Okay, uh, George, George, you might want to step back to your police buddy, buddy. George! Oh, George, I want to get to be out there. There they are. Okay, uh, you know folks, no worries. We're just going to go to the corner here. We're going to hide behind these flammable gas tanks. I bet that is definitely going to be the next famous place where we can hide. Okay, hopefully when we're out the water, we'll take the bait. It's attached to the yellow barrel. Okay, looks like the barrel's not moving out there. That's not a good sign. really was nicknamed after Spielberg's lawyer, still his lawyer to this day. But Bruce out there, he was as much of a menace off screen as he was on screen because Bruce was originally designed for fresh water. But director Steven Spielberg decided to move most of the filming right off the coast of Martha's Vineyard, so as soon as Bruce hit that salt water, he also hit 
the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean floor. That's a much maligned shark. The shark was frustrating. It, it didn't really work over the time. It didn't work hardly at all. Wherever you were on the island, you could hear the radio mics. They were always saying, The shark is not working. Repeat, the shark is not working. We just waited around. We just waited and waited and waited. The shark worked well enough for a while there in the big So I really owe the shark a lot. Over on the left hand side, you may also recognize that location as Cabot Cove. That's right, that's where we filmed 12 very successful seasons of Murder She Wrote, starring Angela Lansbury. series about a boy which filmed out there for about two seasons. Coming up here on the left hand side you're going to see the tail end of our Colonial Street otherwise known as Wisteria Lane from a Desperate Housewives fans. It's our very traditional looking neighborhood. Right now we're definitely leaving the suburbs behind. We're going to take you out to the wilderness which means at this point I think it is time for migration season. But Illumination, we're fortunate to be the stewards of a number of franchises. However, we also have a mission, which is to bring new stories and new characters into the world. Let's fly. In migration, a family of ducks will embark upon what will become a journey of a lifetime. We meet some funny, silly, likable new characters. Everything will be all right. Yeah, no, I'm okay. We can do this. This movie is a reminder that no matter how fearful we might become, there still is a beautiful world out there to experience. I will survive people survive All right, so as we continue on here, coming up next, quick transition, more picture cars. Uh, think of this area like picture cars 2.0. For those of you who've been on the tour in the past, you may notice some things have changed out here, especially in this next section of the tour. Mr. Bean's Holiday. For my Transformers fans, we've got Bumblebee out there as well as a police cruiser from those productions. And then for my Fast and Furious fans, as promised, a couple more options on display for you today. Now, all these picture cars, they're all currently parked right alongside the motel we have out here in our lot. Some people say the owner of this motel is a little different. I say the owner of this motel, he's a little psycho. Welcome everyone to the Bates Motel and the Psycho House. Oh, looks like my friend Norman Bates is hanging out there in the window today. Don't worry, Norman, we won't be stopping by for a shower anytime soon. Now, for those of you who maybe watched the television series Bates Motel, if you're wondering, oh, did that show film out here? The answer is nope. That show filmed on location in Canada. They just did a really great job at recreating what that Bates Motel looked like. And then as we continue to make our way up the hill here, we're going to get a chance this evening to uh, pass by the original Psycho House. It was built at a three-quarter length scale, giving us the illusion that it was on a much higher hill than it actually was. In fact, the original Psycho House consisted of only two walls, but then something happened in 1964. We started a studio tour, so we added on two more walls. Now the house is what we call a shell. So all four walls, but nothing inside, unless you happen to see Mother rocking away in her chair in that yeah, second story window. window. Now just past the Psycho House, we're about to show you all one of the most spectacular sets we have here on the Universal Backlot. Welcome everyone to Steven Spielberg's crash site from War of the Worlds. And this is an actual Boeing 747 that was specifically destroyed for this set. The airplane crash site set is a perfect example of a set that is all designed around a vision of Steven. When you first began to sit down to talk about the war of the world, that thought, what if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? Because it's, it's just something you don't see. You're doing good. You're doing good. You're doing something. I want you to close your eyes, okay? Down close. Come on.
Let me get in. That's absolutely horrifying. Yeah. Get in. I love it. We've got about 10, maybe 15 minutes or so left until we're back at our unload area. So here is that final friendly reminder for you. We still have that red e-cord that's located directly in the center of the tram. So if you do have a medical emergency, you drop something over the side, you still have that as an option. Otherwise, it just remains seated. Continue on here at the tour. Now, another really neat way this airplane crash site set is used twice a year. The SWAT team is out here. They're searching rescue dogs, and they do search and rescue training out here. Since it's an actual airplane, it's a fantastic training facility for those animals. So it's kind of cool. Uh, you may also recognize this set if you're a big fan of Nicki Minaj and Rihanna. It's where they filmed their Fly music video where they're using their dance moves to fight off a bunch of ninjas out here. Uh, and if you're wondering, where did this airplane come from? The Mojave Desert. Basically, there's this big airplane graveyard of all these decommissioned or retired planes. Uh, the production, they purchased the plane for about $60,000, chopped it up into a couple different pieces, brought all those pieces out here on big flatbed trucks. But in order to do so, they had to rip the roof off the top of the plane so it fit like under the underpasses. And originally production thought, oh, Spielberg, he's going to want to reattach it, right? Instead, Spielberg said, no, this looks great. Let's incorporate this into the movie. So if you remember in the production, uh, the aliens or whatever the other beings are, they basically grab the plane out of the sky. They rip the roof off, suck the people out, toss the plane down. We are looking at the remnants of that airplane crash in a very traditional New Jersey neighborhood. So the homes off to the right-hand side that we're passing by, those are homes that are modeled after a real neighborhood in New Jersey where they got some nice establishing shots of the nice homes and then when they came out here we just built the destroyed version so pretty neat. Uh, you may have also noticed it was kind of tucked away in the back corner on the uh, left hand side but there was a log cabin back there. Uh, that log cabin was originally designed for this fantastic comedy. Oh, right now, Doors, starring John Candy and Dan Aykroyd. That same log cabin was also featured in a couple episodes of Picard for my Star Trek fans. Uh, it was also featured in the film Wanderlust, as well as the film Deja Vu. As well as the film Deja Vu. Uh, there's also a horror movie out right now. It's called They Slash Them. It stars Kevin Bacon. Uh, the majority of the movie did not film at that log cabin. However, they did some nice uh, media shooting at that log cabin for like some of the trailers and the posters and whatnot that was filmed in front of that log cabin. Uh, and then that fireworks show that we're seeing out there. Oh, it's either for the Wizarding World of Harry Potter or it could be for Waterworld. I think it's Harry Potter. Anyways, that was fun and exciting. Uh, but we're going to continue on here. It looks like coming up next we're all set and ready to show you all the newest addition to the Backlot Tour. Uh, we're going to take you all to Jupiter's Claim from Jordan Peele's latest movie, Nope. Movie magic only happens when a team of collaborators, often in the hundreds, work together to take an impossible notion and bring it to life. This it's Jupiter's Plane, a nostalgic, small-time Southern California amusement park owned by former child star Ricky Juke Park. Over there, look into the winking well and have your picture taken just like the kids in that old 90s movie Kid Sherry. That's what this whole place is loosely based on. Remember that one? No? Why? A little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso Experience. Built to showcase an unbelievable new live show. Well, it's not looking so live anymore. Anyway, behind this Hollywood fantasy of a gold rush frontier town lies a sinister secret. It is smack dab in the center of the UFO hotspot. Welcome to the world of no.
Okay, so I think we're going to go ahead and uh, take that bit of advice and get on up out of here. Now, for the movie Note, for the specific location Jupiter's playing, they did not film those scenes out here in our lot. They actually filmed those scenes on location over in Santa Clarita. So once they were done with that production, they wrapped up all those set pieces, brought them out here so we could all enjoy them on the studio tour. Now, it looks like coming up... Oh, boy. Um, okay, uh, folks, looks like right now uh, we're actually going to be taking a slight detour off our scheduled tram route. I do apologize for this uh, small inconvenience. It looks like they are redirecting us into Sullivan's Truck Repair Shop. Great. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to complain with you all. They prepped us. This may be happening. It looks like it's happening to our tour right now. Apparently, we do have a witness on board who saw something that Owen Shaw did. He's a criminal mastermind. Uh, whoever the witness is, remain calm, remain seated to the rest of us. Hang tight. Uh, hopefully, we'll have someone out here in just a few moments who will be able to explain to us what our next step is going to be. So, again, <laughs> no need to panic. Um, I'm sure we've got everything here. Oh, hey. Dimitri. Ah, you too. My buddy Hobbs asked us to stash you sharp for a while. He brought you in our secret spot. Okay, cool. Alright, look guys, we're gonna keep Shaw from finding you. But to keep you safe, we need your help. We don't want the syndicate tracking us. So put away your cameras and turn off your cell phones. One flash or one ringtone can get us away. I need y'all to take this real serious. Okay, pull into the next bed and we'll meet you in all right, so it's like in just a few moments here, they are going to be opening these bay doors for us. At this point in the day, you do not need to put on those 3D glasses. I will let you know when you're going to need them. But Sullivan's Truck Repair Shop, really well-known street racer hangout area. It also happens to be a really well-known street racer party location. And if my intuition is correct, I believe that is what... Okay, it looks like the doors are open. Let me see. Let me see. There we go. Okay, looks like I've regained control of the media. What in? Just like I was saying before, really well known to the racer. Speak now! 
won't get fried! This is our time. No! After that! on behalf of myself, Katie, our driver Mike, and everyone here at Universal. We hope you all enjoyed your exclusive Hollywood access. Also, if you all still hold on to those 3D glasses, we will be returning these to the 3D glasses bins here in just a few. And then coming up here over on the right-hand side, you all are about to get a real nice view of the valley here this evening. You can see Warner Brothers off in the distance there with their big WB sign all nicely illuminated out there. Uh, we like to say Warner Brothers. They look up to us here at Universal literally just past Warner Brothers, ABC, Disney, and Disney Animations out there in Burbank. Uh, and then honestly, at this point of the day, I just want to say thank you all so much for joining us here. I know the last few years have been really crazy for all of us, and a lot of us have heavily relied on movies and TV shows to kind of help us get through everything. So the fact that you all are back here today celebrating and appreciating all that hard work that goes into your favorite movies and TV shows, it means the world to us. So thank you. And on that note, hope you'll enjoy the rest of your evening here at Universal Studios Hollywood, the entertainment capital of LA. Now, as we come right back towards our unload area, take this moment, look around you, make sure you gather up all your loose belongings before we get you back out to the theme park. Uh, the theme park, we're open until 9.30 this evening, so they did extend...